So last year, we did a review of the Hollyland HDMI transmitter system. Uh, fantastic for wirelessly putting a camera away from you, sending a feed in to be used in something like Ecamm. And you can watch that video up here. Now, we've got two sons, Owen, who helps me here in the business. You'll see him in these clips working away, setting everything up. And then my other son, Jamie, who loves his archery. And we thought, what a great example to be able to set one camera right down near the target wirelessly and then have a couple of others around him so we can get a few different angles of him as he's taking his shots and working and I reckon this could be darts or golf maybe not so much golf because you don't quite know where the ball's going to land at the end of it but other target sports I guess where you could have one camera sat at a target and then another one sat further back at the athlete now, all I was doing that for was really to do a review and test out these wireless transmitters. If my son said, hey, we've got a competition coming up, uh, it'd be really good to be able to do this. Could we live stream it out? Uh, or maybe you've got something like this that you think, yeah, I reckon that would work in that scenario. I just want to go through with you and show you how we set this up in Ecamm or how I would come at it. So let's have a play with this. First thing we want to do inside of Ecamm is to create a new blank profile. Okay, so we've got nothing in here at the minute and we're going to create out several scenes for the different scenarios that I can think of. So let's just plan this out and let me show you quite what the setup was there. So Jamie, my son, is standing here as the archer and we wanna put one camera behind him and we'll call that camera one. We wanna put another camera facing him at 90 degrees so that we can see his technique, see his face, see as he's taking the shot. And then the exciting bit is having another camera way down the field, 50 yards down there at the target. And we'll call that camera three. Now cameras one and two, and then up near the target. And then near the archer, we're going to sit with a laptop where we're going to be using Ecamm, laying it out like it's going to be here. In my case, I used my phone because I'd got a good 4G signal uh, to be able to use that as a hotspot. If this were a competition or a live stream, you might want to have a microphone with you if you're sitting directing the thing at the computer, you're driving it. And it might be nice as well to use a stream deck to just be able to punch between these scenes nice and quickly. Uh, we'll see that in a minute. Now, all these cameras are running off batteries, so be sure to have some spares with you. And uh, cameras one and two, we're running over a five meter H HDMI cable into a cam link and then camera three down at the target connects on a short HDMI into the transmitter end of the Hollyland and then up here at the laptop you've got the receiver end again with just a short HDMI cable. I'm just using something very simple like a little hub like this. Uh, you can get these off of Amazon they're not expensive but you need to be able to bring in those three cam links to be able to feed in. And no, you can't use something like the A10 Mini for this as a switcher because Ecamm only sees that one feed. And we wanna be able to have these three different camera angles to be able to pull in and play with. Now, if you're used to Ecamm, you're probably used to seeing scenes where you're full on camera like this. We're gonna start with a blank scene. By default, you just get a black background when we do this. We'll have a look at changing that background around in a minute. And we're gonna use camera overlays. Now. I'm in the office here at the minute and um, I just want to set this all up as if we were going out. So we're just going to think through. I've got two cameras set up here just to at least give us something to play with. In here, I get to completely change this around. If I go to custom and uh, you can see we've got some radius on the corners of here, we could uh, square some of these out if we wanted. I'm going to leave it like that for now and it just means that I can pull this around and move it and then when I want to add in a second one so let's imagine this maybe is looking over Jamie's shoulder so this is camera one that's shooting down the field actually I'm just going to turn these uh, controls off here in this version of Ecamm I can click up here and I can remove all these window controls and it uh, just makes it easier to uh, work away in here so this is camera one and maybe because we're standing looking down behind him we could keep this one like this then we want all I do is option and I drag this across and this one is going to be our other camera now for the sake of this I'm going to call this guest one this is the one that I think the target that wants to be downfield now we could actually put this in a circle I did think about doing this when we were setting it up originally because it's guest it isn't changing actually let me just show you this if I bring this into the other camera you can see that it's coming in a circle. 
I thought this made sense because we're shooting at a target, but actually because we're shooting at an angle, it's not fitting in properly. Uh, so I ended up just sticking with a, a square or just a, a regular shape over here. So if I come back to custom, uh, then I can adjust this. And when you've got that camera shot coming through from camera three, the other thing you can do inside of Ecamm with camera effects, there we go, let's go with this one here and we select that second camera. So I could zoom in on the target and look how over here I can place this. So it just allows us to get that camera downfield, hopefully get a zoom lens so that you can keep it a little bit further back from the target. No one's gonna be shooting it. And if we were to go uh, circle on here, as I say, there you go, you can see what's happening with that one. Uh, totally up to you whether you think uh, the circle works, but I reckon this is the most important part of the scene here. So I'm going to take that up to the edges and uh, we're going to make the target nice and big. And then over this side, we've really got two sections to this. And again, let's just do option and drag this down. Tuck these up into the corners here. And I think you could imagine we've got camera one at the top, camera two at the bottom. You get the idea. Now we could uh, adjust this one so that it came across and we keep these spaces around it nice and even. But I reckon this could look really nice over here. Or if you wanted to, you could bring this down and maybe you put a, uh, we put some text at the top. I don't know, I'm being really creative here. Archery competition. We don't need a background on it because we're gonna put it along this uh, black. Or maybe you do want to. I'm gonna go in here. We're gonna go for a nice, um, let's go for a strong one. So we're just gonna put this at the top of here. I'll let you be all creative with how you do this. In fact, let's put a background on. Click on background and then let's change it. That's better. Archery competition. We can put that up there. We can make everything kind of brand and align and do things like that. Obviously, we can't set this up until we actually get out there. Then all we'll do is in the same way that here we've gone, which camera is it? You would just select which camera it is and you decide. But we can have everything laid out in here now. And we can actually lock this scene down once we're happy with it. Over here, we can lock the whole scene down and then nothing can move around. We've got it in position and it's all looking nice. Maybe what we'd like to do then from that, and if we we're on this scene, we could clone down and it might be that we want just to have camera one. Okay, and on this one then, we're gonna turn off these other cameras and all we want open is camera one. And maybe we wanna set it like this so we're getting a real close shot of camera one. Maybe we wanna keep it like this and be able to write some text down the side of there. So lots of flexibility and options. And uh, the other thing I did I've said on here that you can have this black background behind you. You can Google this and find some free backgrounds and things, or you can actually go off. I went unsplash and just pulled down a couple of images off of there. Notice in this overlay area, you've got showing background down there. If I drag something into that showing background area, now it fills in the background that is behind me and it will do the same thing when I go to the other scenes as well and all of a sudden it's a bit nicer maybe than having that black background behind it or I found this Lego one over here as well this was on splash so if I want to change them around I just change I, I unselect the little eye on that one so now this one's coming through behind now if you come over to unsplash.com let's just put in archery and uh, you do find that the ones at the top come from iStock you're going to pay for those ones um, but there are plenty down here and you can select that you only want landscape ones. Um, it might be that an image like this might sit nicer in the background. Let's click on this and we can download it for free and um, thank him. We'll do that later. But I've now got this image over here that again I can drag in and if I put it at the top there that will come in top. Um, it might be too busy. I think that one is really, isn't it? But you get the idea. You can actually do something with these and you could pull in a nice image in the background or you could just go for a texture and uh, select something there. I'm not gonna go into any more than that. I'll leave you to it. I think I'm just gonna stick with this cork board for now. You get the idea. You see where I'm going with this. You could actually play around with it and uh, it, it gives you some flexibility to put a text box in. You could write the score up here. We can either do that by simply just bringing in a text box like this, put it up here and clone that down as we wanted to. Maybe uh, in archery you work in ends, they're called. So I could leave this kind of blank up here to say end one. And then I, actually as we go, I could be writing in here that he got a seven. 
seven, nine, nine, five and a five. There you go. So that's his score for end one. And we can save that. Uh, you just need to make sure that it's set right so that it will fit. Um, and you could see the score as it was coming up and then maybe we should have done it that way around actually. And then we clone that one down. If you put it in first like this and then you can backtrack from it, this could be any camera angle over here, but it just gives us a chance to keep that scoreboard up there, copy it down and away you go. This is different things that you could do. So this is camera one. Now we've sort of set this one up. And if you decided you wanted to keep this bit empty, I've just realized actually we ought to keep, we, we would need to blank this out. You would need to be left aligned with this because it's going to move as you start filling that in. I'm making hard work out of this. <laughs> it's probably what you're thinking. Right, so th there it is. Let's, um, we'll clone him down. There's no snapping to tell you the height difference, but that looks about right to me. Now, unfortunately, we can't clone this scene down because what we write in this scene isn't going to carry over to the others. But what we could do if you wanted to be able to just keep this window open and change between cameras is we could duplicate this camera and overlay kind of three on top of each other. So we could then with the stream deck be changing between three different camera overlays is a possibility. But ultimately, as you can see here, we can just play around. We could create scenes uh, for the different cameras. If we wanted to just have a shot of the target, for instance, well, that's camera three. And so on that one, we're going to get rid of these overlays, uh, potentially that one. This is just camera three and we could uh, make this as big as we want now. Then if we want, we could again kind of change it around and put text around it if we wanted to. But uh, can you see how good this is? And I um, encourage you to have a go with it. If, if you can set up like this, if you've got the option to be able to run with uh, several cameras, if you were shooting closer in, you could be using phones, I guess. Um, you could even do that over NDI. But uh, to get this nice HDMI signal coming through, uh, I, I think this is a really fun way of doing it. And um, I'd love to see actually what you came up with, what you did. Um, have a think what kind of sporting events and otherwise that this might work for. But yeah, we set it up here. We could actually, if we wanted to, from Ecamm, we could export this profile so we could export the current profile to a laptop if you haven't built it out on there you could actually provide this potentially for people as a service that's not a bad idea now coming back to the technical side of it on site i would be setting up camera one and manually focusing it on the back of this person's head touch on the screen lock it down you don't want when he steps out for it to suddenly focus all the way down the field you just want to keep it locked in this position with an archer they will always go to the same spot so it shouldn't be hard when they're in place for you to be able to lock this in the same with camera two where do you want to focus it in on their face? They're going to be side on like this. So you want to be able to focus it in on their face, manually lock it down. Again, you don't want this focus moving around. If they step out of it, you want the camera to stay fixed. Camera three, exactly the same. You want it focused in on the target. Keep slightly wider on the aperture on these so it isn't quite as shallow a depth of field. Check in on the batteries, keep an eye on them. You're going to have batteries in the cameras batteries in the HDMI transmitter and receiver. Your laptop's gonna be running off of a battery as well. So don't spend too long messing around with all this, or if you are setting it all up, have spare batteries for the cameras and things. So just before you actually need it, you can quickly flip them out, change them around. I reckon people would be blown away if you can show up with a presentation and scenes and that created like this, where you're cutting between three different cameras, potentially targets, uh, I'm just thinking as I'm saying this, actually, you could also have an iPad or something with that scorecard on and you could be with a pen filling it in here and you could bring that in as another feed. So lots of ways you could have a go with this. Yeah, equipment, three cameras, a Hollyland setup, your laptop and some cables, three cam links. Go have some fun. Well, I hope you found that useful. Do let us know in the comments any questions about it. Please fire away. Uh, we've put links to the description down below. And if you haven't watched it already, why don't you head over right now and watch that Hollyland review. Thanks so much. See you in another video.